morning flood. A slightly late start. We have a few little flooding problems around the back over there. So we need to sort that out after that. Welcome to this feast of the presentation of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, 40 days have passed since we celebrated the joyful feast of the Nativity of the Lord. Today is the blessed day when Jesus was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. Outwardly, he was fulfilling the law, but in reality, he was coming to meet his believing people. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, Simeon and Anna came into the temple. Enlightened by the same Holy Spirit, they recognized the Lord and confessed him with exaltation. So let us gather together by the Holy Soul. So let us also gather together by the Holy Spirit Proceed to the house of God to encounter Christ. There we shall find him and recognize him in the breaking of the bread until he comes again in glory. Let us pray. O God, source and origin of all light, who on this day showed to the just man Simeon a light for revelation to the Gentiles, we humbly ask that in answer to your people's prayers, you may be pleased to sanctify with your blessing these holy candles, which we are eager to carry in praise of your name, so that treading the path of virtue, we may reach the light which never fails, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, true light who created light eternal, spreading it far and wide to the universe, for we pray into the hearts of your faithful gathered here today, the brilliance of perpetual light, so that all who are brightened in your holy temple by the splendor of these candles may happily reach the light of your glory. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Zion, adorn your bridal chamber and welcome Christ the King. Take Mary in your arms who is the gate of heaven, for she herself is carrying the King of glory and the new light. Virgin she remains of bringing in her hands the sun before the morning star begotten, whom Simeon, taking in his arms, announced to the people of the world as Lord of life and death and Savior of the world. Amen. Amen. We take a moment to confess humbly before Almighty God on this great feast day our own sins, asking God for mercy upon each one of us. I confess, O oh my God, and you are my brothers and sisters. I am great in sin, in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and in my words. I walk through my heart, through my most previous thoughts, that I am the Spirit of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, do pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You will honor the Holy One, you will honor the Lord, you will honor the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. <laughs> Almighty and living God, we humbly implore your majesty 
that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the Holy Temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may, we may be presented to you with minds made pure. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. took him in his arms and 
bless God, saying, Now, Lord, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about them. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and for the rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, that the thoughts of many be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna by name, the daughter of Manuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. Coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting, awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to the Galilee to their own town of Nazareth, the child grew there and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> the first part of that Gospel that we just heard this morning, filled with, this is the law, this is what you've got to do. And that's what laws are. Laws are things you've got to do. They're not options, they're not suggestions, they're not if you feel like it, they are the law. And the law for the Jewish people was very strong. After 40 days, you bring your child to the temple. And there in the temple, you present your child. But you don't just walk in and say, here's the baby, go goodbye. You walk in and you make an offering. An offering for poor people, a pair of turtle doves, two young pigeons. That was the offering for poor. You go back to look and look in the law of Moses and it says for poor people, this is what you offer. Rich people, a couple of sheep or a couple of oxen perhaps, you know, big animals. They're, they're rich, they can afford that. So we know that Mary and Joseph were a poor family because they, they were allowed to offer the, the simplest of the gifts, just two little, two little birds as sacrifice to the Lord according to the di dictate of the law of the law, not just, well, this is what the law says. The law dictates what we must do. Jesus, the point of this is that Jesus, even though as a baby, was fulfilling what was required of him. And he continued to do that for his whole life, fulfill what was required of him. It says later on there, the child grew, grew, and became strong, and that's not just strong, you know. He probably was, because his dad was a general contractor. I mean, the word that we often hear is carpenter, but the proper translation for the Greek word tekton would be general contractor. He didn't just put together chairs and tables for people's houses. He built houses, stone houses, wood houses. He built, um, barns for cattle uh, and fences and, and he was a general contractor and Jesus growing up with his dad would have learned all that and so hefting rocks around wood around nailing and hammering and building Jesus would have gotten physical strength yes of course but he also got filled with wisdom filled with wisdom now we know the word for wisdom in Greek is Sophia and there's actually in the Old Testament, as we well know, a whole book called Wisdom. And Wisdom, you read the book of Wisdom, and it says, Wisdom was with God from the beginning. In the beginning, she was with God. It's a feminine noun in Greek and in Hebrew, for that matter, as well. She was with God, and Jesus is filled with this wisdom which only God has. You and I might be wise in certain ways, in different ways in the world, but not the wisdom that God has not the wisdom. And the favor of God was upon him. Now remember, Jesus was God. So what does it mean by the favor of God was upon him? 
Did he like himself so much? No, no that's not what it means. Jesus, as we know from St. Paul's writing, put aside his Godhead. I am God. Put it aside. I want to live the way you live. I want to live in the way my people live. I want to get hungry because I haven't had a meal in eight hours. I want to feel love of the people of God. I want to feel cold when it's wet and rainy, and it does get wet and rainy in the Holy Land as well. It snows sometimes there. Um, I want to feel oh, so hot when the wind is blowing from the north and uh, uh, you know it's dry and dusty. I want to experience everything that you, my people, experience, but not the sin. I don't want to do that. The sin's your business, not mine. I have come to forgive your sin. And so Jesus grows up because he follows the law. So the rule for us is, we must follow the law. <coughs> and what is the law for us? Well, we know the church teaches us a couple of things that are really important. One is, go to Mass every Sunday. Yes, that is an obligation that we as Catholics have, and you fulfill that obligation. I know you do. Go to Mass every Sunday. Receive Holy Communion as often as you can. After you've been to confession, if you've had a mortal sin on your conscience, you must go to confession before you receive Holy Communion. But at least receive, go to confession at least once a year. Easter duties, remember that? Those of you who are as old as I am, remember? Easter duties, huh? Once a year minimum for confession. Um, round about Easter time. Hmm? Round about Easter time. Well, Hopefully, you can go to confession much more often than that. It's first Friday, so we will have confessions available after this Mass uh, back at the church over there if you wish to go to confession today, for instance. Um, go to confession. Live, use the sacraments. If you're married, honor the sacrament of matrimony. You and your wife are a special creation in God. When you stood in front of the altar, and got married in the church, however long ago it might have been, for the priest or a deacon in front of you there, and you made those vows, you made, you gave each other the sacrament. It's the only sacrament priests don't give, huh? We don't give the sacrament of marriage, you give it to each other. Live that, live that sacrament of marriage every single day of your life. I know sometimes you might throw the pots and pans at each other, huh? Sometimes, but always come together again afterwards. Always come together and live that sacrament of marriage. It's a gift you have that God has given you. If you've been confirmed that the sacrament of confirmation, accept those seven gifts of the Holy Spirit that God gives you in, in confirmation. Beautiful sacraments that we have. That's the law of our church. To use the sacraments of our church in whatever stage we are and life we are in to use those sacraments and to carry those sacraments in our hearts and in our minds out of the Mass and to love, to love as Jesus has loved us on the cross. So Jesus followed the law of the Jews at the time, we follow the law of the Catholic Church at this time. Let's give God thanks that we have this law. Give God thanks that he guides us and strengthens us through his law and give God thanks that Following the law of Christ, we will ultimately have eternal redemption and bliss in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> stand to offer our prayers to Almighty God. We pray, of course, as always, for our Holy Catholic Church throughout the world, and we pray that priests and bishops and deacons with blessing candles throughout the world today, the people will take those blessed candles, honor, respect them, and use the light of those candles as a representation of the light of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We 
pray for our nation, we pray for the nations from which we have come. We give God thanks for the many different nations across the world, all brought together in the Church of Jesus Christ. And we ask that the leaders of the different nations realize that they are under God and to respect life from the moment of conception to the moment of natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves gathered in Mass here this morning. We ask God to bless us. Bless our families and our friends. Bless all those to whom we shall give some of these candles, no doubt. You want to pass them around your families and your friends. Pass them around with the blessing of the candles so that they may have that same blessing in their homes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We're offering this Mass for the deceased priest of the diocese of just as one priest. I think it means deceased priest, or keep them all in your prayers. Especially remember any priest that you knew here at Banning or Beaumont or wherever other parishes you may have come from before you came to live here. Many of those priests that have served you and you love them and they've died, keep that priest in your mind right now and pray for his holy soul in purgatory. Priesthood, and I pray for those four men that are all dead now, God bless us all. You go and look up who baptized you and pray for that priest. Pray for him, who, which bishop confirmed you, and pray for that bishop. Keep them in your prayers in every single Mass. Amen. 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 Gives these 
these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant your peace to guide your nights and govern them from the whole world, together with your son, Francis our Pope, and Albert our Bishop, and all those who holy to the truth and of the Catholic and Apostolic faith. And all those gathered here today, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, they offer it for themselves, and for all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory, we memory, especially the glorious of the Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. And blessed Joseph, as far as your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Lord, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and you, Linus, Cletus, Clemens, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysostomus, John, and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and their prayers and all things, we be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable that it become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. From the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, the God, his Father Almighty, giving you thanks and praise. He said the blessing from the bread gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a simple way, when the supper was ended, he took this precious chalice and his holy and venerable hand. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. When therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the Lord, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours forever and ever. 